last class, we had just turned our our photo p clean line art into a vector and in the assignment i give you the link link to vectorizer ai <laughs> i thought it would keep my result from yesterday which was great it showed us the preview of of turning it into a vector but it wouldn't let us download it for free so we were forced because it was no longer free wah, wah. I've changed that in the assignment. Um, we are forced, if we wanted it to be a vector, to use a program that we have access to in the lab that you might not have access to at home, which is Adobe Illustrator. So how do we do that? Well, first, let's get to our clean line art in Photo P, right? How did we do this? We took our sketch and we cleaned it up in Photo P. And we kept it at a high resolution. This is just review. So I did something like 10 by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch. There's my pencil sketch. Then I onion skinned it just by putting a, a white layer on top of it and then taking that opacity down. And then on that onion skin layer, I made a new layer that I called digital ink. And that new layer that's called digital ink I use the brush tool and the brush tool settings. I use the standard brush, just this round brush, right? At 100% hardness, at an opacity of 100%, a flow of 100%, but a smoothness of around 50%. It depends on what kind of shapes you're making. And then I click on this pressure sensitive setting and I use my stylus and tablet, which are open at the back, so that when I ink over my sketch, I can do these beautiful ink lines that will smooth for me and go thick to thin as I decide they need to. And that's how I got all of these lines. So far, so good. Now, some of these lines look better than others. And if I really zoom in, you can see how they get a little bumpy, just like real ink on paper would look. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if I want to make it look as incredibly professional as possible, I want those little bumps to be smoothed out. And I want it to not be set into a pixel-based resolution, no matter how high it is. I don't want to ever see these little square stair steps on my curves. So the only way to clean it up like that is to make it into a vector. And we haven't done that before with vector programs. We've only made kind of black shapes with our vector programs. So this is how we do it. We save this. I, I turn on my onion skin layer to 100% white. I turn off my sketch and I save this export it as a JPEG. Doesn't matter if it's a JPEG or a PNG, but I'll do a JPEG. I'm going to save it. It's going to go to downloads out of Photo P and I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to bring it from downloads onto my desktop. I'm going to rename it as a test file. This is reviewing what I did in the last video. Now a test file is transitional. It's my rasterized version that I want to change into a vector because it's got all this kind of little noise to it that all comes from the photo P brush. Okay, so now you can use something like vectorizer AI and pay to, to download it as a vector. But we have a program that already does that, which we've paid for at the school for you to use, and that is Adobe Photoshop. So all you have to do is to right click on it from the desktop and say open with, not Adobe Photoshop, it's Adobe Illustrator. You have to open with Adobe Illustrator. And you can even see their little icon for their new version is spot illustration behind line art. So, once it's open in Illustrator, do this. Click on it. 
So you get that blue line, then go to properties in the upper right hand corner. Then scroll down. You guys will need individual help with this, but that's why I'm putting it in the video because it's not a one click process, but it's an important process. Once you click on it, it gives you kind of a transform box around it. Because this isn't photo P, we have to hold down shift and we have to hold down option to grow it from the center. I like to grow it so that the edges of it are right off of the, the artboard so I can see that white background that's in the raster image. But the rest is on what's called the artboard in Illustrator. Okay, then under properties, not layers, not libraries, properties, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see image trace. So make sure it's clicked and then click on image trace. Then click on black and white logo. And we just made logos, but we used vector.com. As soon as you do that, it will turn it into a vector, at least in the preview. So look, this looks very different than my pixel-based image from PhotoP. Do you guys agree? It's perfectly clean at any scale. But it is not a vector yet. How do I know? Well, I still have the white in there. So in order to change it from a black and white logo into just a black line art vector, I need to click on these advanced options, which is the image trace panel. I can click it here. I can also go to window and click it here under image trace. So then I get my window, my options, right? And now I need the advanced options within that window. So I click on that drop down arrow. And then the first thing I'm going to click, maybe the only thing I'm going to click in this window, is to ignore the background color. I click that, and you'll see that that white disappears. So now this is only black shapes. This is only black line art. That's what I want. Next, I can adjust it if I need to smooth it out a little bit more. I can adjust it, but this looks pretty darn good because I inked it already in a digital program. This isn't like a scan that I'm trying to turn into a vector. So if I'm happy with it, it's not a vector. It's, it's just a preview of a vector until I go down to the very bottom of properties and hit expand. I don't know why they use that word expand. Illustrator just always has. And that changes it into anchor points. And how do I know if I use the small selection tool, the, the small arrow, you can see each anchor point. Then, just like in vector.com, if I wanted to alter it, I can. But unlike vector.com, my favorite tool in Illustrator is the pencil tool, which allows me to just, like magic scissors, reshape certain, certain edges. As long as you can see the anchor points, then you can redraw them. And this could lead me to be really, really perfectionist, and that's not a good thing. So I'm just going to leave this as it is now. Looks pretty good. And this is going to be my vector line art. Now, how do I save this? I need to save it as a vector format. So if I say file save, it will save it as an Illustrator file. And I don't need that. What I need is a portable vector file that I can bring back into PhotoP or even into vector.com, right? So I'm going to say a file save as to my computer. And the format for that is going to be an SVG the same one we saved out of vector.com for our logo. And now I can give it a name. I'm going to call it Carl Assignment 5 Spot Illustration Line Art. And it's an SVG, so it's a vector, but I might even call it Vector Line Art. Okay, I save it. It went to the desktop. I can close Illustrator. I can quit Illustrator. Why is that important? Illustrator costs a lot of money. You have access to it on campus, on the lab. It only takes five minutes to turn 
high resolution black raster artwork that you've done in a freeware program into a vector. So it's good to know how to do that, right? If you work for a company, maybe they'll purchase Illustrator for you or Vectorizer AI or Vectormagic.com or any of these that, that really do a good job of image tracing. Okay, now I'm going to bring that SVG into my uh, folder and I can't open it up in PhotoP. If I try, it will force me to rasterize it. Instead, I'm going to create a new file in PhotoP. And I'm going to make that new project my spot, my full color spot illustration. So Carl, uh, assignment five, spot illustration, full color. And I want it to be in inches, 16 inches by 20 inches. And then the pixels per inch, 300 pixels per inch. So this is poster size. This is looking ahead to how we're going to use this spot illustration in the next project. Because even though our line art is a vector, our coloring behind it, our colored glass in our stained glass window is not going to be vectorized. So now I'm going to take that SVG and I'm going to drag and drop it in. And then I'm going to use Option, not Shift this time, because now I'm in Photo P, to make it nice and big on that large format. And that SVG is a vector. Let me check my uh, image size. I hate how PhotoP does that. You guys all saw that I put in 16 by 20, but then it changed it to 3 by 4 inches. But here's the beauty. Because I brought it in as a vector and it came in as a smart object, right now it looks pretty bad when I zoom in. It looks like that. But when I change the image size and I change it, to what I put in originally, 16 by 20, and say OK. It's going to take up a lot more memory. Come on. And it's automatically going to grow that vector to fit that resolution. So that's the, the advantage of a vector. And now it's much, much cleaner. And it's much, much cleaner than my line art alone that I made the vector out of. So look at that versus this. You guys see the difference? And that was as clean as I can make it in PhotoP, but that's what happens when you vectorize it. Cleans it up a lot. So that's your best possible line art as a vector. All right, now we're going to learn the next step in making a full color spot illustration. That is to label your layers because there is a right way to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename my vector line art smart object layer. I'm going to rename it in all caps black bread because it's like a sandwich and it's the dark bread that goes on top of my sandwich. And I'm going to rename my background white bread. And that's just a full opaque white layer that I'm going to lock. And I'm also going to lock my black bread layer. So now I have two slices of bread to make my digital coloring sandwich. And I need at least something in between the bread to make a sandwich, right? So I'm going to make a layer in between the two, and I'm going to call this layer flatting. So flatting, how can we learn what that is? If we look at the assignment, you can see that after vector line art, the next step was flat local color for this lemon. But that's because the lemon is a very simple color. So a lemon is yellow. That is its local color. But if we're doing more complicated coloring, we need to look at these slides. My exhaustive explanation of digital coloring. Digital coloring is coloring behind real or implied line art, right? It's different than digital painting. And the first step could be flat local color.
but in professional work, 